It seems like everyone in San Francisco is talking about housing lately, and with good reason. San Francisco housing prices are among the highest in the nation. The median home price recently topped $1 million, and rents continue to rise. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time the price of housing has been in the news. For decades, not just in San Francisco, but the Bay Area and throughout California, the cost of a home has made headlines. The median price for a house in the United States is $207,000. In California, it's more than twice that amount. The Bay Area has even higher prices, and San Francisco's median home price is now more than double the state's. So, while more than half of Americans can afford to buy a house at the median price, fewer than a third can in California, and less than a quarter can afford one in the Bay Area. And now, fewer than a sixth of San Franciscans can afford the cost of a median home in the city. So why is housing in San Francisco so expensive? There are several theories, but here are the facts. Well, there's the obvious. There's a high demand to live here. And why not? The city is known worldwide for its cultural diversity, physical beauty, and fun-loving spirit, all of which continue to attract new residents year after year. There's also the incredible opportunity. Our city and region's diverse and dynamic economy continues to expand and grow jobs. As a result, we now estimate that the number of jobs in San Francisco is also at an all-time high of over 600,000. In 1980, San Francisco's population was roughly 675,000. Since then, the city's population has grown steadily and relatively quickly. The most recent estimates show our population approaching 840,000, the highest in the city's history. And it's not just San Francisco that's growing. The Bay Area has 2 million more residents and 1 million more jobs today than it did in 1980. And this growth is expected to continue. By the year 2040, the Bay Area is projected to grow to 9.3 million people and 4.5 million jobs. Unfortunately, our housing supply hasn't been able to keep up with increasing demand. There's no denying San Francisco is amidst a building boom, but what you might not realize is the majority of construction you see now is housing that had been suspended for years due to the 2008 recession. While population has increased by 24% since 1980, housing has only increased by about 19%. If we don't plan for and produce housing along with job and population growth, the cost of housing will only increase. So how do we plan for population growth and housing needs? The Regional Housing Need Allocation, or RENA, identifies the total number of housing units by affordability level necessary to support new residents. San Francisco incorporates the RENA into its housing element, which guides the city's housing-related goals and policies. The RENA data plays a significant role in developing neighborhood plans specific to responsibly accommodating growth throughout San Francisco. These plans, developed by years of city and community planning efforts, have laid the groundwork for much of the construction you see today. So the city sets goals and makes rules about what can be built. Then what? In broad terms, the private sector builds market rate housing and nonprofit developers build affordable housing. But it is a bit more complicated. The vast majority of housing in San Francisco, as well as throughout the country, is market rate housing built by private developers and within guidelines set by the city. Some is below market rate housing, paid for by a combination of public and private dollars and priced to be affordable to specific populations. But what do we mean by affordable? Housing is generally considered affordable if it costs less than a third of the household's monthly income. The area median income in San Francisco for a two-person household is about $70,000. That household would have to pay no more than $1,750 in rent or mortgage per month in order for their housing to be considered affordable. San Francisco has long applied federal, state, and city funding toward affordable housing developments, often built by nonprofits and intended for lower income individuals and families. San Francisco is also one of the few cities in California with a mandatory inclusionary housing program. This program requires that market rate projects with 10 or more units either make 12% of the units in the building affordable to certain below market income levels or contribute money to the city's affordable housing fund, which supports the public construction of below market rate units. Almost 21,000 below market rate units in the housing supply have been supported by city funds. More than 6,000 of those units were built between the year 2000 and 2013. So what if you don't qualify for below market rate housing, but still can't afford a million dollar home? You aren't alone. Many households in the city are in this situation. 
In response, San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee has set a goal of creating 30,000 new and rehabilitated homes by the year 2020. Most will be within reach of middle-class San Franciscans, and over 10,000 of those will be permanently affordable. With federal and state funding sources for housing drying up, the City of San Francisco is taking an increasingly active role in planning, paying for, and providing housing across all levels of affordability. We are working diligently to build enough housing for everyone who wants to live here, protect the existing housing supply, strengthen protections against the eviction process, and encourage higher levels of affordable housing through development incentives. We are committed to meeting the housing needs for all San Franciscans. To learn more, visit sfplanning.org slash housing element update 2014.